to my presentation. Welcome to my presentation on result provenance in named function networking. My name is Claudia Marxer and this is work together with Christian Chutin, who is my PhD advisor at University of Basel. Before I come to the contribution of this paper, I will first introduce named function networking. An NFN is a named data network where not only named data is available, but also named functions. Named functions are common NDN content objects which contain executable code. What applications in NFN do is they compose computation expressions from data names and function names. We see an example here where two documents are involved. The first one is data Alice, the second one is data Bob. And of interest is counting the number of words in both documents. And then finally, the maximum value of these two integers is returned as a final result. What NFN offers is an in-network expression reduction service, which is performed by certain NFN capable nodes. This includes two things. The first one, obviously the evaluation where function code is applied to data. And the second one is orchestration, which is about the decision where to evaluate which computation or subcomputation. We see an example on this slide. We have on the left side a client, then we have in the middle three NFN nodes and also the two documents and the two named functions are available in our network. The client on the left is interested in the result of the expression we saw in the previous slide. So what is done is encoding the expression into an NDN name, put it into, a con put it into an interest and send it towards the network. In our example, it's NFN node 1 receiving this interest. And the first step of NFN 1 is to do the orchestration. In this case, NFN 1 decides to delegate the subcomputations, which is word count, and then later perform the application of the maximum function. So NFN1 takes the sub-expressions, encode them, put them into an interest packet and send them to the network. In this case, it's NFN node 2 and 3 who receive these interests. And again, they first do orchestration. In this case, they decide not to delegate the computation, but perform them locally. So they enter the computation phase and first request the data and the functions. Once these are available, they apply the function code to the data, pack the produced result to a content object and send it back to NFN1. After receiving the two intermediate results, NFN1 receives the function code of the maximum function, applies the code to the intermediate results, and once the result is produced, pack it into a content object and return it back to the client. Next, we introduce a challenge in NFN, namely that of result correctness. We then present a solution approach which is based on provenance records. Before we come to a conclusion, we talk about ongoing and future work. Good news is that NFN offers a convenient computation service for applications. However, what also needs to be mentioned here is that the whole NFN network needs to be trusted that evaluation rules are follows, followed and the evaluation is based on the specified data. What I want to say with this is that the result correctness is in NFN is subject to extensive trust. The goal of this work is to relax these trust assumptions. Our approach is to lock the genesis of results in provenance records. The benefit for client is that they can trace the compute entities involved into the computation of a result and assess on this basis if a result should be trusted or not. Provenance in general is a directed acyclic graph capturing involved elements in a computation, which can be data or processes or also software and hardware environments, and also the relationship among these. In this work, we propose to integrate provenance records in named function networking. 
A provenance record captures for a single computation steps a. The identity of the computer entity, which is a public key, then b. Signature and provenance records of all inputs, which is function and data, and c. An HMAC over the result, and d. An HMAC over the concatenation of a, b, c and the expression. Let me note that C constitutes a statement on the computation process which can't be plausibly denied by the computing entity in future. With this slide I come back to the example from the NFN introduction. We see in blue hashes of the data and function objects and we see in red the identities of the NFN nodes. And now here in green, the provenance dark of the entire evaluation. On the right side, we see the provenance records for the word count sub-evaluations. And on the left side, the provenance record for the evaluation of the maximum function. What we see on the right side is that the input, which is function and data is referred. And on the left side, we see that the other two provenance records and also the function is pointed to. Then on the very left of this slide, we see that the final result also contains a pointer to the provenance record of the top level call and the expression. On this slide, we will show how the provenance metadata can be used for result verification. The input of our procedure is the provenance records of all subcomputations and also a list of trusted compute entities. The verification goes in three steps. In the first step, it is checked if compute entities were involved which are not trusted. If this step fails, the final result should be seen as untrusted in general. Then in the second step, we check all the HMAC statements in all provenance records. And if this fails, it should be assumed that the respective provenance record is forged or tampered. Then in the third step, we check the result HMAC of the final result. And if this fails, we can also assume that the final result was forged or tampered. In case all the three steps are successful, we can conclude from that that the final result is correct under the given trust assumption, that it's authentic and of integrity. Before I come to a conclusion, I want to point to some topics of ongoing and future work. First of all, I want to talk about the establishment of trust in compute entities. In our current implementation, clients hold a predefined list of trusted compute entities. It is, however, an ongoing project to develop a system in which clients exchange reputation information on compute entities. The information on the compute entity's reputation is collected by selectively re-evaluating -evalu expressions and compare the results with the ones delivered from the network. Helpful for the system is that provenance records are non-deniable proofs of the behavior of compute entities. We found that related work exists in the field of semantic web and also that the DWeb community is facing similar issues. Then for future work, I want to point out to another approach where third parties, which are trusted by the clients, do certification of computing entities. As a second point, I want to focus on user constraint orchestration. In our current system, it is an issue that if the network delivers an untrusted result to a client, the client has no further options. That is why it is ongoing work that clients can proactively constrain NFN's orchestration process, which means to exclude untrusted compute entities in advance. Then as a next point, I want to mention availability of provenance records. In our current implementation, we have two variants. The first variant is to include provenance records in NDN's signature field. 
The second variant is that compute entities maintain tempering resistant append only logs for all their provenance records. It is of course an issue that compute entities have an incentive to not deliver disadvantaged logs. That is why we are thinking to integrate replication solution for clients or trusted third parties. Then the last point I want to mention is about faulty primary data. We should assume that results are, correct, are also faulty if they are derived from faulty data. For instance, if there is a broken sensor somewhere in a weather station and the sensor values are published in the network. Then, of course, also transformations, for example, from Fahrenheit to degree Celsius are considered as faulty as well. We think this is a topic of uh, NDN in general, that there should be conventions to flag faulty content, even though it is authentic. And related to our work, we think that it's worth integrating this into the NFN result verification procedure. With that, I come to the conclusion of this work. We presented a solution in the context of uh, in-network services which act in a recursive read process republish mode. We're thinking of NFN, but maybe also other systems could benefit from that. We identified a challenge which is about result correctness and in general about trust in NFM. Our approach was to relax the trust assumptions by introducing transparency and provenance and a procedure to verify results based on provenance. We mentioned several open topics for future work which means that our solution still needs uh, more elements to be added in order to become a deployable solution. With this conclusion, I end my presentation and thank you for your attention.